super uh, respectful. Mm -hmm. And now at the interview table, we have our 2021, or 2021, sorry, Big West Tournament Champions, UC Davis. Winners 61 to 42 over UC Irvine today. Up at the interview table, we have our two student athletes. On the left is Evan Turner. She had 22 points, 11 of which came in the fourth quarter, went four for four from the field, hit both of her three pointers. On the right, tournament MVP Sierra Hall. Not much to say about Sierra other than player of the year and now tournament MVP. Woo! So she's had a busy 2021 <laughs> campaign. We'll open it up for questions for both of our student athletes. If you have a question, please use the hand raise feature on your Zoom, or you can put your name and affiliation in the chat box. We have our first question from Michelle Dapper. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi guys, congrats, Michelle with ACRA and Sacramento. Just tell me, uh, how does this one feel? I mean, that you guys had a break for two months, didn't even think you were gonna play, and then and now here you are, Midwest champs, how's it feel? I mean, it's just incredible, you know. Um, like you said, you know, we had a break for two months. We didn't even think we were going to get the opportunity to play this year. Uh, but now to come back and, you know, battle through all the adversity we've seen um, and to, w to win it uh, just feels incredible. Like all of our hard work uh, and all the adversity we faced really paid off. Um, so, I mean, I'm just ecstatic to, to come out with this win. Am I supposed to answer that too? Yeah, you could answer that question. Okay, too. sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. You're only a sophomore, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just like Cece said, um, this feeling is just unreal. Just We just connected all the days, all those days of practice, literally just practicing and going against each other. This feeling right here is so amazing. Everything just paid off and came together. Let's go over to Jim Alexander. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I, I want to kind of amplify on that. During, that. during that two months, Obviously, you were playing. How much were you able to practice? I mean, were, what, what sorts of basketball activities were you able to do? And how did you guys stay sane while you were waiting to, for it to be determined what, how the season was going to go? Um, yeah, I mean, it was for a while our, our county, you know, because of health precautions, we were shut down and we couldn't practice. So it was really just, you know, banding together and, you know, we had a team meeting about, like, but is this what we want to do? And, and everybody was 100% all in that when we are able to move forward, we are going to put 100% effort into this and we are going to work our way to, to get to where we are now. And so it was definitely tough, you know, in that time when we can only um, play against each other. You know, we couldn't even have practice players this year. So it was definitely a lot of just day in, day out against each other. And it would have been easy for us to just be like, okay, you know, like this is getting hard. But it was really amazing to see everybody come forward and say like, no, we're trying to win a championship this year. We're going to come in every single day and put in the hard work and the effort that it takes uh, to get to where we are now. <clears throat> Sorry. So, Ivan, were, were you guys able to use the university facilities? Did you have to go looking for gyms to play pickup games? I mean, how did that go? Um, we were able to use the gym for the most part. I mean, there was a stretch there that we weren't allowed in the gym. And then it went to individuals, and then we just continued to expand it from there. But we were for the, we didn't go to any other gyms, just kept it at home at Davis and just continued just to work at Hickey and the PAV. And was it a case where you're just communicate, trying, reaching out to communicate with your teammates on a daily basis just to make sure everybody was on the same page? I mean, yeah, um, we had a couple of meetings, just team meetings together, and we already, we're all friends and sisters and just family, so we hang out on a daily basis, but a lot of talks and calls, just making sure that we're all on the same page, and we were, that we wanted to get to this point and keep pushing. We'll go back to Michelle. Go right ahead. Coach keeps saying, you know, you, you guys are keeping improving. You guys are improving every single day. Um, what, what have you guys learned about each other this week in particular? I mean, what, what, what kind of team is this now that you've all been You know, we just, like, we really just saw our heart to this weekend. You know, it was... Um, it was tough to get here. It was not easy. I mean, we played the least amount of games, you know, of our season. And so, like, normally when we're in March, you know, you're playing your best basketball because you've worked all the kinks out. But for us, it was like, okay, we're still, you know, learning how to play together. But our chemistry was amazing, and it was just so great to see every single person 100% committed, uh, no matter what the role was, to, to winning a championship. 
Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, some of the other things that we learned was just that we're willing to play for each other. Like we're going out there to put it all out for our coach, our staff, and our teammates. That no matter what the outcome is, is that we're going out and putting it all out there on the court. And that's just a beautiful thing to see. And knowing that my teammates have my back like I have theirs is just um, an amazing feeling. And we're just going to continue to keep that going. So no one really, really ever says we're going to San Antonio, but you guys are going to San Antonio. How does that feel after everything you had gone through this past year, the cancellation of the tournament last year before you even had to take the floor? How does it feel to be able to put it together to head off to the NCAA tournament? I mean, the feeling is surreal. Um, like you said, last year we were getting prepped and ready to come to this tournament uh, when we got the phone call that things had been shut down and that was just kind of a, a shell shock. Um, but now, I mean, it feels like every sacrifice we've made, you know, is worth it. Our coaches have sacrificed, us as players, we've sacrificed, not being able to see our, our families have sacrificed. Um, but now it just feels like everything is worth it, you know, and we're ready to go and, and make, you know, make a run in San Antonio. Yeah, um, just like CC said, like everything that we put in just has paid off. Like all those days, all those tough practices where coaches put us on the line, or just not seeing friends or family, making daily sacrifices, like not going home for breaks, and just willing to just continue to keep pushing or going on the road back to back to back. Um, this is just it. Just all adds up to this moment right here. All right, ladies, thank you. Congratulations, and good luck in San Antonio. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll bring up Coach right after. So we'll keep it right here. Got one? Uh, I think I got one, yeah. Thanks, Cece. I would like to say I do not ever put them on the line, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> do not, they always tell another story. I out know. There. And uh, we have head coach Jennifer Gross here. Um, before we start, uh, Coach Gross is the five-time coach of the year. She is the only coach in Big West history to win that many coach of the year awards consecutively. Has now led UC Davis to back-to-back -to -back Big West tournament titles. Uh, last year's uh, tournament was canceled, so they won last in 2019. So, Coach, give us a breakdown of today's game, then we'll open up for questions. Oh, what a feeling. Um... You know, I just, first of all, want to start by congratulating UC Irvine. Uh, what a tremendous season um, that they had. You know, all of us just faced different adversity in our own way, uh, but it wasn't easy for, for any of us. And um, Coach Inouye and her staff um, just do a tremendous job, and um, we have so much respect for their program and, and uh, what, what their players bring to the court. Um, you know, with only a day to prepare for them, that was, it was not an easy task. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm really proud of our team for, for finding a way to, to come out on top and, and just want to, again, praise UC Irvine for, uh, for having such an incredible season. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think about, like, what this feeling is that uh, is in my gut right now, and, and I think it's just pride. You know, I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of... Our student athletes, um, you know, Evan talked about it a little bit, but the sacrifice that they had to um, had to give this year, um, you know, they they I know that every decision they made they made for each other, every difficult thing they had to choose they chose for each other, um, because they thought they had a chance to get to this point today, um, and um, we're just very grateful. Our coaching staff is really grateful that we have such incredible people um, that we get to be around every day. And I'm just so proud of our staff, of our players, um, for, for, you know, I'm, I just, I'm so happy that everybody gets to experience this. Uh, you hope that if you do the work and you just focus on improvement, that the rewards will come. And it, it's pretty sweet when it works out like that. Well, first to Michelle, go right ahead. Coach, congrats. Thank you. Oh, it's up there. I mean, it is so incredibly hard to get to this point, you know, to have, you got to, 
you got to be good, but you got to be a little bit lucky too, and you got to have some things go your way. And um, you just hope that along the way you can um, you can enjoy the ride. And um, it, it's strange that you know there's this pandemic going on, and, and our hearts are broken for so many people that um, ex you know had family members that passed away and and that were sick. Um, and so we thought about that all the time and we tried to keep our perspective um, and, and really just, you know, on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis, remind each other we're healthy and we get to play the sport that we love with our best friends and let's keep the focus on that. And, and by doing that, I think we were able to uh, weather this <laughs> incredible year and, and just continue to make progress every single day. Um, and so... This is definitely one I'm going to cherish and I'm going to remember for a long time. Um, one, because of the, the circumstances, but two, just because of the incredible people that um, my staff and I got to, to be around every day and I'm just so proud of them. Go to Jim Alexander. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, you, you talk about the, the trying to keep everything in perspective and, and even with that, as a coach, the stress of not knowing for two months how this was how this was going to play out, whether you were going to be able to play, when you were going to be able to play, when you could practice, and what have you. How much did that wear on on you and your staff, as well as the players, just trying to trying to get through this? And, and, and then when you finally did get back, how much how there how much therapeutic value was there? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, you asked the question earlier, what, what could we do? Well, for a whole month, we were shut out of our gym. So uh, we were just shut down completely. Uh, and and the, the players could do some strength and conditioning outside um, to try to stay fit and, and just to stay together. Um, and then at some point, we were able to, to do daily antigen testing in order to get back in the gym. And I want to give a huge shout out to our administration for pulling that off. That was not easy. Um, and I really am grateful that they were able to find a way to get us back in the gym so that we could be ready. And I think that without that uh, next step where we were able to get back in the gym, I, I don't know if we would have been able to do it. Um, because it gave us something at least that we could look forward to every day. Um, I, to be honest, I, I felt like the bearer of bad news every time I met with our team. It was like we, we were hopeful, hopeful that we'd get to play this week, and we had to say, nope, hang in there. It's another week. It's another week. Or, you know, this game was canceled again. And um, the, the best, one of the best moments of the whole season, and it had to come via Zoom, a Zoom meeting, because I wanted to tell them as quickly as I found out. But as soon as our county announced that the stay-at-home order was lifted and we were going to get the chance to play, I just remember uh, setting up a Zoom and telling our team that we were going to get to play. And, and they were all on mute, and you know, because in these Zoom meetings, and I looked around like, what's going on? And then I said, please unmute. And then they unmuted. And, and it was like a huge celebration. And at that, from that point on, you know, we were able to narrow our focus and, and start preparing for specific teams um, and, and not just say, hey, we're going to, you know, have another daily practice. So that was a turning point for us. And, and once we were able to, we didn't know if it was going to stick or if we were going to get shut down again, but we were just grateful for, for every opportunity that we had to play. The mute function can be a pain. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. We'll go back to Michelle. Go ahead, Michelle. Coach, I know you've been talking about uh, improving every day, every game. And uh, as I asked the girls earlier, what, what did you learn about this team this week? And did, anything, did they surprise you at all? Yeah, I mean... Um, None of the games we played were, were easy, right? So um, I, I really, so, there were moments throughout each game where I saw so much resolve and so much togetherness when we really needed it. Um, you know, just moments in the huddle or in timeouts when I heard our players saying like, you know, just with so much passion that we've got this. We just need one more stop. Let's get a score, you know, just celebrating each other so much. Um, I still think, 
honestly, we can continue to improve. And it's so exciting that we get that opportunity. I think we saw glimpses of our offense really clicking throughout the week. Um, but then we saw sometimes where we got stagnant or we were pressing a little bit. I think we can continue to clean that up. I think defensively, we, we showed that, that we are a pretty strong team and pretty versatile team. Um, and, and I think we have some of the best defenders uh, in the league on, on the team. And that, uh, that was, um, they, they showcased that today. So um, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting that we still get to have practices and we still get to get better. And um, we're just so excited about the opportunity to find out who we're going to play next uh, in the big dance. Are you ready to embrace that, that bubble in San Antonio? Oh, we've been embracing the bubble wherever we are. You know, we were bubbled in Davis. We were bubbled in Vegas. Now we're, we're going to be excited to be bubbled in San Antonio. So we spend a lot of time together with our team. <laughs> well, good thing we really like each other. Congrats, Coach. So happy for you guys. Thanks again for all the support. Of course. All right, Coach. Congratulations again. Good Thank you. San Antonio. Safe travels down there. Thank you, and I just want to finish off by uh, giving a shout out to the Big West. Uh, this was an incredible venue. Um, everything just ran so smoothly, and uh, we were really, um, really impressed with how everything ran. So thank you so much. Of course, Coach.